this morning is be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, with us so wherever thou goest. God promised in Malachi 4, 6 to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the children to their fathers. He will surely do it. says, Husbands, love your wives. Fathers, please love your wife and children, as God loved the church and gave his life for it, and it shall be well with you. Once again, be strong and be of good courage. Amen.
Lord, I believe, Father, thank you for letting us see this day. Amen. Today is Father's Day. Oh, Lord, thank you for being our God. Amen. Thank you for answering our prayer. Amen. Last year ago, we celebrated, celebrated Father's Day. Amen. Lord, letting us see under 365 days. Oh, Lord, we are grateful to you. Amen. Oh, Lord, continue to be our fathers. Amen. Remember well, each and every one of us, oh, Lord. Amen. We, oh, not only our fathers, remember the mothers as well. Amen. Remember the children. Because the family, that makes a family unit. Continue to answer our prayers. Amen. Where we are shaking, oh Lord, come and raise our come, come and strengthen the family. Amen. Come and strengthen the fathers. Amen. Take care of them. As, they, as the fathers are going about taking care, preparing for the household, getting food for the household, oh Lord, come and strengthen them. Come and, come and guide each and every one, oh Lord. Amen. And some of them who are shaking, oh Lord, come and raise up us. Amen. Come and strengthen each and every one, oh Lord. Amen. Come and bless this day. Amen. Bless each and every one of us, oh Lord. Amen. Let us go back home rejoicing. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Happy Father's Day to every one of you. May the Lord bless you for coming. It's a wonderful day indeed. We have the uh, special choir on the platform today. You're all welcome. We are very happy to have every one of you to take part in the blessings of today. And for our internet audience, wherever you are located, we're very happy that you decide to enjoy this day with us too. It's our usual practice and believe that before every one of us got here, God was here before us yeah. and he's ready to bless us. Yeah. And we pray that he's going to do the same for you wherever you are on this wonderful day. Hey, before we continue, we want to pause here as we normally do. During a combined service like this, we look into some awards that um, we give to some people for doing one thing or the other. Okay, the first person I have on my list here is Brother Gaius Ogbeifun. Next on the list is Brother Peter Oyenira. Next is Brother David Ojo. Last but not the least on our list um, is Brother Bayo Ladende, who is in Nigeria. Thank you very much. The new set that have been put in place to serve for another four years, uh, the men's committee for AFM UK, and it's men's day to some extent. You don't mind, as we call them, to please come forward so that they can know that you are representing all the men. Brother Sheung Aramide. Brother Usika Udose, Brother John Olaleye, Brother Jemi Falade, Brother Joshua Osayemi, Brother Dolakpo Olobunde. They are not receiving long service award. <laughs> I don't know if they will serve for eight years or four years to Jesus Terry, but here they are representing all the men from London. The first on the list, in recognition of his contributions to the welfare aspects and relationship of the church in general for both branches, Brother Femi Osayemi. In recognition of his contributions to the church maintenance from time to time, free of charge, Brother Booth Moyambo. In recognition of his contributions to church welfare again and special projects, Brother Yemi Falade. In 
in recognition of his contributions to the maintenance and the management of church properties and tenancy, Brother Ade Akinola, in recognition of his contributions to the church maintenance, free of charge, Brother Kofo Ogunshemi. God bless you. In recognition of his contributions to church facilities and maintenance, Brother Bayo Akinshola, last but not the least, in recognition of his contributions to church community and the relations among the church members, visitors, and the neighbors, Brother Remy Abdullah. Thank you, Brother. Did you hear that? Like I said, um, we have many men, nearly all the men doing their part, and all our women too. May the Lord bless you all. Amen. Um, we cannot really uh, recognize everybody, but the most important recognition is the one that comes from God.
Please turn with me in your Bible to Psalm 90, verse 1 to 4. I'll start. One. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Amen. Two. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Amen. Three. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. Four. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. May God bless his word. from James chapter 1 verse 17 James 1 17 every good gift Amen. and every perfect gift Amen. is from above yes. and cometh down from the father of lights Amen. with whom is no variableness yes. nor shadow of turning of his own will he begat begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Happy Father's Day to all. Here we need to recognize ultimately our Father who is in heaven as the one to whom we need to acknowledge first on a Father's Day. Because when we talk of fathering, it's about sourcing. And he sourced us. And from the male man, he sourced the female man. The focus, however, today, as has been expressed by the pastor, is on the male man. And as has been prayed, I was, I was nearly shocked. Well, I shouldn't be shocked, but maybe as it happens from time to time, that God himself will tell you something and then you hear it being said um, and then connected to your very thought. Then you know that the Spirit of God is the one stringing everything. And as it came to my mind, James 1.17, to open this short talk with, 
and recognizing God as the father of lights. And he told me that uh, we are the light of the world. He is our father. So he begat us. And in the same way, Jesus Christ proclaimed, I am the light of the world. For he was begotten of the father. And what is light? The song that we sang says that chaos and darkness will flee when they hear, when light comes in. It says the entrance of your word bringeth light. And as the word of God is being shared in our hearts now, may it produce work that will be eternal in recognition for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Because he is the all in all. He is the I am that I am. He begat all of us. And he is almighty. We need to recognize his sovereignty. Because he is the father of all. He feeds us. All the 7.6 billion people that are on earth. And which he refreshes as he wills. Because if we take an entry point of even today and take a cut off mark of the next 150 years, all the 7.6 million, that, that was the statistics on Google as that May 2018, will be completely replaced by this almighty God. None of us will be here. Does that sink? The same planet is the one that actually brings out the crops that they eat. Generation to generation to generation to generation. If there was an alumni group, which there is actually in heaven, of the saints of God, they are then in millions, in their team in billions. So it is within this context of an eternal God that we want to consider the role of man within his structure. This is not subject to the debate about male or female chauvinism. It is not a contest of equality. It's about recognizing the structure which the almighty God has put in place that we may align ourselves with his structure. And as this, the, the male choir just sang, that he will help all our struggles. This is the essence of this talk this morning. And it's my prayer that when we finish this short talk, that we will all go on our knees and truly talk to God, and he will help all our struggles in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm also reading further um, Psalm 39. To put in context, to set in context what we are dealing with here. The light of the word of God. I'm praying that it will come in because light reveals but the sinner is blind. He cannot see the work of God. It is the Holy Spirit that can illuminate our hearts, that can actually help us to understand what we have just said about us being here today and gone tomorrow. And for that to actually make us begin to think very deeply about fulfilling our purpose and the will of God in our lives. Because we have but a short window within which God wants to achieve a 100% correlation between his will for us when he sent us to this world and then what we did at the end. That when the two come together, we can say that thy will was done. So how we span the difference with all our failures today is the message that God wants us to know. How do I, God help me, be the man that I'm supposed to be? Because in Psalm 39 verse 4, it says, Lord, make me to know my end and the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how frail I am. Behold, thou hast made my days as a hand breath. That's a hand breath. That is a hand breath. And mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, Every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Amen. 
whether you live for 10 years or 13 years or 100 years, it is when you begin to, to hit your 40s, your 50s, that you, maybe the penny begins to drop. Yes. That it's very short, after all. It's a very short life. May God give us understanding. Amen. As we speak, may his light from heaven, he's the only one who can do it, yes. penetrate into our hearts Amen. and shake us at the roots Amen. to make us all to wake up. He said, awake, arise. That we may be able to number our days and then apply our hearts unto wisdom. This is not subject to our own ideas or our own pride. It is a day of thoughtfulness, a day of light, a day when the Spirit of God is going to do something in our hearts that will count for eternity, that will change our behavior that will grant us the, the thirst to run to him, the rock that is higher than us, to drink of that water that he gives freely, that we may benefit thereby. Even Jesus Christ began to make allusions to the beginning. He said this in Matthew 19.8 and Mark 10.6, that this, this, what they were doing then was not the will of God. Let us go back to the beginning. And therefore, we will be considering the account of the creation in looking at the role of man. We must have read it a thousand times over, but the word of God remains the same. Yes. Every time we revisit it, we get new insight. Yes. We get new light as he illuminates unto us. So we're going to, to flip to the creation account in Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Looking at verse 26, we find a summary. That chapter is about the summary of what God did. Okay, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 27. So God created man in his own image. Amen. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Amen. So here was the summary of God creating man. Which encompassed male and female. We'll find out in verse 2 how he did that. When he created man, the first man, woman was already inside him. Amen. The male and the female was already inside him. Amen. It's a mystery. Yes. 28. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, Amen. and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion Amen. over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing, that moveth upon the earth. Now let us go and look at, in more detail, the sequence of events that actually happened, the breakdown of the creation. And then we're going to distill from that some of the roles, or if we like, the purpose of man within the structure that God has given us. So let's go to chapter 2. And I will be reading from verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Man took his breath directly from the nostrils of God. A part of God bubbled into man. And man became a living soul, untainted 
pure, holy, living the life of God. Verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. He planted a garden eastward. Eastward. On the right hand are pleasures forevermore. Amen. Eden has been defined as the presence of God. Where God dwells. So he, he, he planted a garden. This was the garden that God himself planted. This was different from the creation. He created everything. So there, were, there was everything around. But then this was a special home. A special place. Where God could communicate with man. And when he created the male man. He, 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 the first thing that he needed was the presence of God. And so he was there with God. That's the first need of man, to be in the presence of God. Our completeness in him. Say, for ye are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. Amen. I hope you understand that. Yes. Because what he got scolded for was, why did you listen to your wife? Above me. So that's the structure. God first, man. And then every other thing follows. Eden was where God used to come and meet with man. And we have the wonderful opportunity that Eden has been restored to us partially that you and I can find Eden in this world. Yes. That in your heart, the Lord can plant a garden this morning. Yes. He demonstrated it to us through the, 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 the tabernacle in the wilderness, through the temple worship. There is an Eden. There is a place where we love to tarry. There is a place where we interface with God. There is a place where... An orchestra can be playing perpetually and softly in the background in our hearts forever. There is a place where God can come and minister to us. There is a place where we feel complete, where we have need of nothing. And that is Adam. For Adam was naked. He had nothing. He didn't know he missed anything. He was complete in God. May the devil not cheat us forever. He has cheated us already. But may he not cheat us forever. Amen. That is the whole essence of Jesus Christ coming to restore back unto us Eden. And that is why he said we should labor not for the things that perish. That is why he was trying to strip us back to where we were before, naked before him. That we may experience the life of God. It's not because God is wicked that he wants to strip you. He wants to set you back to your default settings. That you may understand who God is. Eternal, not ephemeral, ongoing, Amen. thinking right, not mad, thinking, not thinking short term, but thinking eternal. Amen. May our vistas be opened up. Amen. And may that feed back into our daily conduct Amen. that we may then apply our hearts unto wisdom in what we do in each micro short step in this world. And then in verse 9, it says, And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Skipping to verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. We're going to unpack this in a minute. I'm going to break it down into about six bits. But let us enjoy that story first. And let us begin to hold in our heads some of the steps. He put man in the garden of Eden. And he gave him a commandment to dress it. We'll unpack that in a minute. And to keep it. What does that mean? And then verse 16, and the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, 
But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. It is because God had a structure. You see, some, some people may begin to think that the creation of the female was then an afterthought. No. God has his lovely patterns. That's why he even said, look at this beautiful fresh sunflowers here. He said Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If you take a microscope and look at the petals of this, you will see a structure and a pattern. And that is the one we can see visually. By the time you go to microcosms, Yes, by the time you go to things that the eyes cannot see, but the people put under, under their instruments, you can see the patterns of God. God has a pattern. The father of lights is a master designer. We are only, we are his offspring. His attributes is what we are trying to explore. The computers, everything that we do is just tapping a little bit into his knowledge. That is why you can't afford not to miss heaven. The devil is... In planting our heads, there is one boring place. You're just shouting, hallelujah, hallelujah. You haven't seen God's gizmos. You haven't seen Bless God's you, gizmos. Amen. Bless you. Amen. The one who created, the one who, who designed the Lamborghini, and you think that heaven is boring? One thing first, let us secure heaven. In our hearts, He's giving us bite size. Let's get saved, sanctified, baptized, live the life. By the time you drop dead, your life has just begun. So he said, I will make him and help meet for him. He didn't go externally to create her. Let's read. And out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast of the, uh, yeah, all that. Um, let's go. To verse 20. Oh no, it's important that I read this. I'm not going to skip it because we have lessons to learn. 19. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave notes, names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found an help made for him. So God helped him to go through that process. He needed his alone time. He needed what? His alone time to name every creature in this world. When God wants man to focus... He knows how to remove anything that will be given him distractions. Or he gets him through his education first before he gives him what in the English language they call the trouble. His wife. No, no, that's just, that's just the, um, the, the terminology in the world. I don't mean it. Women are a blessing. Yeah. But we need to put this within the context. 21. And the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs. And closed up the flesh instead thereof. Perfect surgery. No scars. 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man. Made he a woman. And brought her unto the man. He sourced woman out of man. She was there already. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. For as many as are looking up to God for this moment in their lives and are seated here, I want to assure you that God will do it for you in Jesus' name. Amen. When you see your Eve, yes, a penny will drop by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Adam had never seen anything like that before. God did not announce to him that this is what I was going to do to you. 
He just knew that he could walk up. Maybe he was a bit drowsy. Or he didn't even know anything had happened. And here he beheld somebody who was looking like him. And immediately he knew that that was mine. God is still in that business. Yes, he is. And he will do it for each and every one still looking up to him in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. What the Bible didn't tell us now here is the blood rush and his emotions to his head when she saw Eve. Because there is a natural thing that happens there. There is something that happened to him. His whole body metabolism, his physio, everything there. There was a connection. And 24 says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. 25, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. And they were not ashamed. So let us begin to unpack what it is that we we have here. The role of the man within the structure of God. Man the first, and this is the allusion that was paid in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. It says, for Adam was first formed, then Eve. What does that mean? It means when something, when you're about to build a house, what's the first thing you build? A foundation. Man was made a foundation. Man the foundation. What is the job of a foundation? It carries the weight of the building and everything contained therein. Whether today it's carrying just only one sofa and the next day the people in the house go out and they see all the things they like and they start bringing it into the house, you have to carry it. The foundation is fully functional. It is not given to unnecessary aesthetics. Bless you, brother. That is why when you go into superstores, they understand that they don't bring men's apparel to the front of the shops. Jesus Christ said he had no comeliness when he came. What does he need fashion for? You see a little girl, I remember my little niece when she was just like this. My fine dress, my fine, she was so conscious about her fine dress. What what does a bloke care about that? You'll still be running around him, he doesn't doesn't know anything about that. Until maybe much later, like 20 something, okay, I've got to do this. The girls are well ahead. In terms of aesthetics, you are made a foundation. You, 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 men are not so much given to things of aesthetic values for themselves, adornments. Well, having said that, there's a lot going on this day. <laughs> but besides the physical appearance, let's dig deeper in terms of what that foundation really means. That foundation means that you are carrying the burden of your family. Let us look at one man in the Bible who God used as an example to show how it is that we need to carry an, a burden for our families. And if we are not doing that yet, may we begin to do that now. If some of the, that's, that's the relevance of the song we sang. He will help all our struggles. He will help us to do this. Let's look in Job, in the book of Job. Chapter 1, Job 1, I think it's in verse 5 that we read about how Job was praying for his family, how he held them up to God, even when he didn't know the details of what they were doing. In verse 5, it says, and it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job how? 
continually. We need to pray. But, but, but the word of God tells us in Psalm 11.3, it says, but if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And that is why the male man is under severe attack. We are an endangered species. Because in the structure of God, the male man is next. And that is the reason why the male man is under serious attack. Everything is contending for the life of the male man. Even now, in today's society, and we're going to see more of this as the world continues to move towards the coming of Christ, the collapse, they we're trying to erase that there is no difference between a male and a female. Everybody go inside the yeah. same toilet. Uh, we are the yeah. same. We are all the same. Yeah. We are, well, maybe they'll come to the point when the, the, the male and the female will be doing a 100 meters dash together in the Olympics. Well, I don't think they will do that because God will still establish himself. That You can't change the structure of the, of the male physique. He's built to be stronger. He's built, he's built to be faster. He's built to carry more body. This is God helping us to understand his structure. Try hard as man may be, they will not succeed. Because the word of God is settled in heaven forever. So we are the foundation. Spiritually, the foundation. Physically, the foundation. In every way, the foundation. Number two, man as visionary and leader. Man as visionary and leader. In verse 16 to 17 of that uh, of, um, Genesis 2 that we first read, you see, it was Adam that God gave all the instructions to. Mm. It is God, it was, it's the one who, who was the one who, who understood the, the revelation of God. Who, he's the one who was the visionary. He was the one that God commanded. He's the one who he told all the details to. And that is the reason why when he fell, he God did not come down and even ask for Eve at all. He went straight to the one who he actually committed the oracles to. Let's keep that at the back of our mind. Number two, man as teacher. Adam had to teach Eve God's command, which he actually succeeded in. Because Eve was able to recount to the devil that God had said. He was not the one who heard it. That means Adam sat her down and taught her the word of God. Amen. And she took it and she understood it. That is our challenge today. Amen. God has given the man the responsibility to teach his household. Many have relinquished that responsibility to their wives. May we rise up to our responsibility. Amen. And our women can help us a great deal. They can encourage us where we are failing in that structure rather than doing it for us. We don't want our husbands to, to fail yet, right? So... I, I still have a little bit of a, a problem with, uh, well, maybe that's the way I'm made. Um, uh, as we raise our son together, my wife would tell me, let him do it. Don't do it for him. Take your plate, go and wash it. Because automatically, I just take it and go and wash it. So I say, okay, that's true. He needs to start learning all these things. That is a help. In the same way, let us help our husbands. You are the help meet. Yes, we need to pray, darling. Let's, please, you are, can we get the children around and Yes, then the, the man can step into that role and do it. Don't see your husband as the failing one. Rather, you are the helpmate. There are things women see, they do, that we just don't have the capability to do that because it's been taken away from us. So we recognize that special place 
that the woman feels, the role that the woman feels. It's equal and important to God. That's why in the summary that we read, he said he created man and he created the male and female, equal in the sight of God. But within that structure, God now breaks it down, what exactly he wants. It's like the church of God. By the time we get to heaven, there will be no pastor, no overseers. We will just be together. We'll be the same. Even there was a time that the Sadducees came to argue with Jesus Christ that in heaven, will there be male and female? And they gave a story. What did Jesus Christ say? He said, the, the configuration will change when we get there. They will not be like this anymore. So it's a temporal role. So let's get into our spiritual heads that everyone fitly fit into your, into your positions. God is going to bless. Amen. So teach the wife, teach the children in Psalm 48. This, is, this, this, this always brings tears to my eyes because... The, we, we sing that song, even, even there's an anthem in the choir. It says, Psalm 48, verse 12. It says, walk about Zion and go round about her. Tell the towers thereof. Where is our Zion? It's the gospel. You must know the gospel inside and out. 13, mark well her bulwarks. Consider her palaces. You see, I mean, recently, my wife and I, we were able to go to Windsor um, Castle just before the wedding and going round into all the treasures. They labeled everything. They knew the history. Everyone was able to recount what, what, what we were looking at. The history dates back as far as I don't, can't remember now. That is how we are meant to know the gospel. Inside out. If we are going to be effective as men, we must know the gospel inside out. You're not going to do that by not reading the Bible. You're not going to do that by not really studying to show yourself approved of God in the role that God has given you. You see, you see the church is to help. They are not to raise our families for us. So if you think because they have read their Sunday school book, they have done things there that you don't need to actually sit them down and teach them. If you don't, their peers in school will teach them bad stuff. Some really, really bad stuff. I'm a teacher. And they will teach them some really bad stuff. You don't get in there first and begin to educate your children. Let them know the wholesomeness of why God has created them this way. They will ask you questions. If you shy away from it, someone else will teach them. So we are to teach our children. It's not easy. But you have to discipline yourself. That's why we need to be in Eden. We need to be in his presence. So that it is from there that the right words, how we say that it will be well targeted, not over the syllabus for his age, for her age, and not under. It will just be right. Short question, curious question, short answer, curious solution. And, uh, and that solves the problem for that time. The child grows up again, but because... Because you started engaging with the child, it will be easy. If we look in Deuteronomy 6, a breakdown is given on, on how, we, how we spend the quality time with our children. Some people think, some people think it's just quality time is when you, when you just um, play with them for a few minutes. No. It says when you sit down, when you stand up, when you sleep, when you do everything, the quality time. Because you don't know when that question is going to be shot at you. But you need to be prepared. The man as a teacher. And then it goes further. He said, for this God is our God forever and ever. Uh -uh, no, I missed that bit. Very important. That he may tell it to the generation following. So your purpose for studying goes beyond just studying for your own heaven's sake. The man as a foundation and as a teacher is not selfish. You need to know the Bible so that even for the objective of communicating it to the following generation. I forever thank my fathers in this glorious gospel for effectively communicating the gospel to us. Amen. Now, our, our challenge is are we going to be able to effectively, effectively communicate this gospel to the generation following? There is nothing that will communicate it than living the life. That is the teaching. That is what Abraham taught. If it's just about what we say, that would not go beyond the ceiling. 
but they see you kneel down and pray, and God actually answers your prayer. They know that you are dwelling in Eden, that they can bring their problems to you, and when you pray with them, that it will truly be solved. May God help us. And then flip back quickly to, to, to Psalm 44. In verse 1, it says, We have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us what work thou didst in their time, in their days, in the times of old. May we never be tired of giving the full report of the gospel to our children, spending quality time with them, even one to one. Even one-to-one, going through their problems with them. Look, that is a whole, a whole seminar for men again on, on its own. That is not something that we can unpack here. But may God, through his spirit today, teach us all these nuggets for his, for his kingdom's sake, in Jesus' name. Then, there's a big one. There's a big one. It's man as cultivator. That is Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, the one we were reading just now. He said, he put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it. That dress, when we look at it, means to nurture it, to bring the best out of the garden. The garden has been given to him. Now God says, dress it. Dress it. Dress it. Bring the best out of it. Shape it. Do that, that was the work that man had, was to enhance the garden. The, the cost, the work that the cost brought was later to till the soil. That was, that was sentenced with hard labor. That's not the one we're talking about. We're talking about bringing creativity out of people, having patience with everyone, with your wife, trying to look for the, the best positive construction that you can give and scheming. You don't just do head-on frontal attack to bring something out of people. You may have to run with them as a coach, as a mentor, rather than a, rather than a frontal attack. Oh, why have you done it this way? Man is not to, yeah, we, we have dominion, but we are not sent to dominate. Bless we are not sent to intimidate. Bless we are to run with the grain, and as we are doing that, working alongside each other, enhancing, bringing the best out of everybody, adding value. And you know, you take these this qualities even to your workplace, everywhere you go, because, because everything in the garden, everything in the garden is what God wanted him to, to dress. Everything, everything, the animals, the habitat. Look, may God give us understanding that, that we need to dress the garden of the Lord, the house of the Lord, our roles in fulfilling his purpose. And also, he said to keep it. That takes us to the next one. Um, man as protector. Man as what? Protector. To keep it. To keep it means to guard it. Unfortunately, these ones, they lost it. But it has been restored to us. And when, we, when you get it into your soul, may God give you... <laughs> it says, set your eyes as a flint. Let your loins be gathered about you and your lights burning. To protect that which has been committed to you. Because it is very rare. We've got to protect our Eden. It's very rare to come by. I don't know how many people have Edens, but the provision is there. May God help us to protect our Eden. When you get that, that heart of flesh that God has promised, may you keep it cultivated. Amen. May we keep it cultivated. May we protect it. May we guard it jealously. Because a little sin will begin to harden us up. And very soon we'll lose all our tears. And very soon we'll begin to behave anyhow. But if God continues to keep us in his Eden, we will continue to cultivate. We will continue to protect. That protection is from God. He will give us the strength to go out there and protect and fight the good fight of faith and protect everything that is ours. Let, like, well, the, the Philistines were trying to, 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 um, to hype themselves up. When they say, quit yourselves like men. Quit yourselves like men. In my language, there's something they say that you have to be a man. To be able to fight for that which is right. And again, lastly, we want to look at man as provider. 
This is an attribute of God that he has endowed unto us. In 1 Timothy 5, it says, But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel, we do not shirk our responsibilities. We do not run away. We pray to God, and God helps us to be able to get the resources that we need to feed our families with. May God continually help us. So, the mental capacity that God has given us is very important. Everything that he has endowed us with is very important. He wants us to cultivate it. You see? And there was something, again, that man did. Man was given the responsibility of naming everything, including the woman. When you name something, you own it. When you own it, you take responsibility for it. That is what God was trying to communicate to Adam. You are responsible. That is why we have the tradition of a woman leaving her own name and taking on the man's name. That is why it's usual sometimes that the father is the one who names the child. God named Jesus. He didn't leave that to Joseph. He sent his name. His name shall be called Jesus. And that was why that authority came out of Jesus when he said, do you not know I should be about my father's business? Do you not know I should be about my father's business? Because it wasn't Joseph that named him. So everything that we have named, everyone that we have named, everyone that bears our name, we are responsible for them. And may God grant us the enabling grace to be able to cry unto God, to be able to own them in Jesus' name. In conclusion, there was an extract that we used at that um, prayer meeting. It's about our need for the oil of the spirit. It says, when a car leaves the factory, it is oiled and ready to travel. After a certain number of miles, it will need more oil or the bearings will become dry and the motor will get hot and parts of it will melt and it will be ruined. New oil put in periodically will keep the motor humming smoothly for many thousands of miles. There is a need for us to dwell perpetually in Eden. In Psalm 1611, we read, In thy presence is fullness of joy, and at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. God is sovereign, and we recognize that our purpose and assignments are a race against time. Soon, I mean very soon, not a single one of us seated here will remain. I don't know if that penny drops for you. The balance of what is left for your life, for my life, we need to fight and struggle. Our behavior must change. Something must change about us. And if you're perfect and you're doing everything well, may God grant you the the grace to continue. That your family, they know that there is an altar in your house. That your family know that they can take their problems to you and that you will pray with them and the problem will be solved because they recognize that you are actually and truly connected to God. You know, that you can bear the burden, that everyone can bring their problems to you and that you will not crack. You know, that you, 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 you treat everyone fairly, reasonably. You don't, you don't, you don't dominate. You, 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 you behave like Jesus Christ. You are a burden bearer. Look, we need the grace of God. Um, the time will not permit us to, to expand and expound more than this, but we know that the Spirit of God, who is light, is the one who is going to illuminate our hearts. Amen. As we consider this Father's Day, I appeal strongly to our, our mothers, our wives, and our children to help us, to support us, to pray along with us that we may fulfill this mandate that God has given us to fulfill. We shall come to the altars of prayer to pour out our hearts as we cry to God to help us as fathers to fulfill these roles that he has enumerated to us Yes, let us come and pray. God bless you.
Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you because you are God of deliverance. Help us, men. Help us that you shine your light upon that which you have learned. Mighty Jehovah, guide us that we will be able to guide our families. Almighty God, we have no strength of ours except it comes from you. Lead us. Guide us. Hold our hands. Mighty Jehovah, lest we fall. We are relying on you. There's none like you. And keep us righteously pursuing your own righteousness always, that heaven at last will gain. Everyone here, Heavenly Father, grant us safety through your mercy and grace. Take away every challenges that we have. Solve our problems, Heavenly Father. We are trusting you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ.